Now, the second heaven is where you have more or less the celestial activities. That's when the Bible speaks about we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against power, against rulers of darkness in heavenly places. So where you have all these demonic activities are in the second heaven, not the first heaven. Those are what you call powers of darkness in heavenly places. That was the place where the, from third heaven, God released the blessing of Daniel. But as the angel was coming down, there was an interception by the prince of Persia in the second heaven. So if your prayer life is only on the, this realm, you will not be gaining a lot of victory. You have to climb spiritually by faith to the second heaven to contend with every powers that are trying to hold you down. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's look at Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 19. I think you know that the sun, the stars, and everything is not in the first heaven. If it was in the first heaven, we would have been roasted. The, what you are seeing is as big as the earth. They are in the second heaven. That's where you have the stars, the moon, and all of those things. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 19. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 19. If anybody says if you can read it, I can raise the Lord. So when you see the sun, the moon, the stars, they are things in the second heaven. That's why you see the powers of darkness, they use the sun, they use the moon to do things against people. When they want to destroy some people, they go and make manipulations with the powers of the sun and the moon. Praise the Lord. We can also look at um, Matthew chapter 24, verse 29. Matthew chapter 24, verse 29. We are looking at the things we see in the second heaven. Matthew 24, Verse 29. The word of God says, Immediately after tribulation of those days, shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give a light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. Talking about when the great tribulation will come. The powers of heaven shall be shaken when these things fall from heaven. But we know when Stephen was being killed, he said, I saw the heaven. Let's look at it. Acts chapter 7, verse 55. Such a beautiful summary. I saw the heavens open. So a portal was open. A revelation was open to Stephen. And he saw the heavens open. A revelation was given to Stephen in the place of death. But he being full of the Holy Spirit, showing something. You cannot be able to see revelations about the heavens of heaven without being in the spirit. Because with your ordinary eyes, you cannot see it. So you have to be in the, you know, in the, in the spiritual realm to see it. He said... Verse 55, but he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven. Take note. First, he looked up into heaven, what he can see, and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God. And said, behold, I see heavens open. You can see that means I, saw, I, I am in a potter that the potter... Pass through the first, second heaven. I now see Jesus in what? That's why I say, I see heavens open. I see heavens open. Praise the Lord. And the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. I see heavens open. And the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. To round up what I mean, I just wanted to give a groundwork of 
the first heaven, the second heaven, and the third heaven. Now, what are these portals? Portals are more like a gateway. Portals are more like a channel where God gives you things to see or revelation or provision or anything. So it's a channel where things go up and come down. One of the portals we saw is in Genesis chapter 12, verse 28, there, when Jacob was sleeping and he put a stone on his head. Not knowing that before then, the father Abraham, the grandfather Abraham, has built a portal, has built a place there, which they call Bethel, the house of God. So a family can build a portal based on prayer. You know, a church can build a portal. You know, some people, you are just located in a place. Suddenly, blessings start coming your way. Because maybe along the line, someone has built a portal there. A place where anytime people appear there, there's revelation. There's blessing. There's something happening to people's life. So that was what happened to Abraham, uh, to Jacob. So as he went there and he slept, he said, I did not even know God was there. Because there was a ladder and he could see the heavens and the glory of God and angels were ascending and descending. So you can see that that was a portal where that's why God kept on telling him, go back to Bethel, the place of intimacy, the place where I can really speak to you. Go back to Bethel. So once you are able to build a portal, it's God that provides that portal finally because in the place of prayer, that's why you see some people, they will go to a particular place. They've not been getting answer in all their prayers, or, but suddenly they come to that place and things start happening. It's because by God's grace, a portal has been built in that place that brings about, you know, prayers being answered in time. Praise the Lord. So portals are more like a gate, are more like a channel that when it opens, things happen. God said in his word, he said he opened the heavens and sent them bread for the children of Israel. In Psalm 148, we have it there, we also have it in the book of Exodus. He said, I sent them bread from heaven. To the people. So that was what you call the portal of provision. Let's even look at Psalm 78 verse 23 to 25 there. So that was a portal of provision. I say it's that when God finally wanted to save Noah and his family, everything that was in that ark was saved. That was more like a portal of protection. Everything that was in that ark was saved. Anything outside that ark was destroyed. So let's look at Psalm 78. Psalm 78 verse, 20, 78, uh, verse 23 to 25. Psalm 78. If you see it, you can help me read. Psalm 78 from verse 23 to 25, if you see. Potter was open. He said he opened what the door. He opened the doors of heaven. A potter, pot house was open to provide food. That is what you call the potter of provision. He provided for them. In the case of Ezekiel, it was a potter of revelation. The case of Ezekiel was a portal of revelation. In Ezekiel chapter, we know that, Ezekiel chapter 1, verse 1, they say, I saw vision. Portal of revelation was open. He could see, and that's why the word of God came forth expressly. When a portal is open for you, you see some people just saying, God spoke this, God said, a portal has been established, and God starts speaking to the people. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The same thing with Isaiah chapter 6. Isaiah. A potter was open. When the potter was open, the potter was only opened after King Uzziah has died. Because some potters might not open for you. There might be something blocking the potter. You could only see the heavens. You could only assess what God was showing him after King Uzziah died. In Isaiah chapter 6, 
when this is one to fold it. It was then he saw the glory of God. And God revealed things to him. Saw the seraphims, the, the, the angels with wings, crying, holy, holy, holy. And it is my prayer that God will open portals for us in the name of Jesus. But one thing I know, if we look back into Psalm 24, Psalm 24, he said, Who shall ascend into the hills of the Lord? Before finally he says, Open ye the gates. That, you know, I want us to pray. That's our prayer. We are going to pray. First, I will just read it and we'll do some prayer. So, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Psalm 24. The world and they that dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. Who shall ascend into the hills of the Lord? Who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who had not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. He shall receive the blessings of the Lord and righteousness from the God of our salvation. This is the generation of them that seek him, that seek the face, O Jacob. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up what you everlasting door. You potters. If the potters are not open, then you cannot see the revelation. But then, the beginning of it is that who shall ascend into You have no right to say potters should be opened for you when you are not living right. It is those who have clean hands, who have not lifted up their hands in heads unto vanity, that shall receive the blessings of the Lord and righteousness from the God of our salvation. The aim of a potter is to bring about blessings, bring about information, bring about, you know, revelation, bring about things to make things happen for you. And that's why we have to pray that, Lord, whatever is closing my portal, portals are open at God's own timing, but we pray for it. That, Lord, whatever is closing any portal you've opened for me, Lord, open, have mercy and open it in the name of Jesus. Whatever we want to close that portal of provision, the portal of revelation, the portal of supply, the portal of protection, Lord, by your mercy, Take it away. That King Uzziah that is making me not to assess my heavenly brother. Lord, take it away. In the name of Jesus. I want you to pray. Lord, open the floodgates of heaven. That's the portal of heaven. You let your blessing flood my life and my family. Lord, let your blessing flood this house. Let your blessings flood my home. Anything that you want to hijack my blessings, be it in the first or second heaven, Father, contend with those forces in the name of Jesus. Father, let the floodgates of heaven pour out his blessings upon us in this house. There will not, there will not be enough room to contain it in the name of Jesus. Let there be portals of revelation. Let there be portals of uh, uh, provision. Let there be pot potters of healing. Let there be potters of, oh Lord, breakthroughs in our lives in the name of Jesus. And let your name alone be glorified. Thank you, Abba Father. Take all the glory. Take all the honor. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Yeah. 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 Call him Yahweh. It's a faithful God. We bow down and worship Yahweh. 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 Yahwe
I rise above that oppression. I rise above that intimidation. I rise above that evil inheritance. I rise above that jobless situation. I will rise in the name of Jesus. I will rise above the situation. It doesn't matter the inheritance. When it is negative, I rise above it by the blood of Jesus. I will rise. Lift up your voice and declare. Your declaration is your manifestation. How we rise above oppression. How we rise above sicknesses. How we rise above condemnation. How we rise above everything the enemy has put against me. How we rise. We will rise. We will rise. your name. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. In your name. Yes. Adonai, you reign on We will rise. We will rise. We rise as a nation. Are you seeing yourself rise? Because when the heavens are open over you, you will have the wings of an eagle. You will rise above condemnation. You will rise above infirmity. You will rise above even inheritance. You will rise above joblessness. You will rise above the oppression of the enemy. I will rise. See yourself. You will rise. You will rise. We will rise. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Blessed be your holy name forever. In Ezekiel chapter 3, rise. I see someone rising. And I will, uh, and I will just stood there as the glory of which I saw by the river of Seba. And I fell on my face. When the heavens open, God speaks to you. Now is a word, a prophetic word to you and I. It's the time for you to arise and see the glory of the Lord. It's the time for you to arise so that his hands of mercy will lift you up. And you are able to overcome those situations in your life. He said, and the hand of God was upon me. He told me to arise. I want you to tell the Lord, Father, let your hand of mercy be upon me. And take me beyond my widest pedestal. Let your hand of mercy be upon me. And put an end to mockery in my life. Let your hand of mercy be upon me. And put an end to every form of oppression. When the hand of Jesus... I want you to tell the Lord, when the hand of God is upon you, you speak to dry bones. Ezekiel 37, and they receive life. What is that situation that seems like a dry bone in your life? Ezekiel 31, 37 from verse 1. I want you to start prophesying. Your mouth is so secret. I, I usually tell you, the heavens are open over you. I want you to take a prophetic stand. There I shall decree a thing and it shall come to pass. I want you to declare, Father Lord, concerning my children, concerning my family, concerning my health, concerning even COVID-19, we speak, we take a prophetic stand. That Lord, you will put an end even to this pandemic in the name of Jesus. Put an end to every dry bony situation concerning my life, concerning my family. In the name of Jesus, I want you to pull down the strong God of the enemy that has made you not to leap forward, that has made you not to move forward. I want you to pull down every strong God of unbelief, every strong God of oppression, every strong God of disbelief. Anyone, any pull down the strong 
stronghold, every wrong mindset, everything the enemy has used against you, pull it down in the name of Jesus. I pull it down. I pull down stagnation. I pull down oppression. I pull down intimidation. I pull down everything. The enemy has fought against me. I pull it down. Every barrier, any visible mark that the enemy has put that I will not progress in life. I pull it down by the blood of Jesus. That's our declaration. We pull down, we pull down, we pull down. We have access into the heavenlies. Every king Uzziah that has blinded my eyes not to see the heavens open, let them die. Let them die. Whatever desire, it might be joblessness, whatever it is, every Uzziah that has not made you to experience an open heaven, they have to die. It might be joblessness, it might be visible, it might be invisible, but they have to go for you to be delivered. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you for liberation, O oh Lord. We will arise. Prophetically, we move forward. I want you to take a prophetic step. I don't know why God is telling me. Take a prophetic step and move forward. Move forward. See it. See it. See it. You move forward. Move forward. Advance against even the plans of the enemy. You move forward. I see you moving forward. I see you leaping over those situations, over those barriers in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Give a clap offering to the Lord if you know you've received it. Hallelujah. Give a clap offering to the Lord. You're not Prophetically, you've scaled. You have moved forward. Thank you, Father. God bless you. Lord, we thank you for answers to prayer. God bless you.